Hey everyone, this is Chris, and we're going to do another Lamello in the Field segment here on the Cabin Build in Maine. So here we've got our uh, staircase to our loft, and we thought this would be a great place to put a little bookcase. And so a bit of a challenging application where we've got uh, an angled component to the cabinet sides, and so we're going to have angled shelves. And so to figure this out, what we did is we took a piece of rosin paper and uh, taped it over the open to get a nice template. Did it the easy way instead of doing doing math. <laughs> so uh, uh, anyway, now I think we're going to use uh, a combination of Climax and probably the Flexus connectors to uh, assemble this, and we'll see how it goes. Let's give it a shot. All right, so here we've got our, our uh, left hand jam leg, and so I'm going to lay this out here in my template, and this is the bottom of my framing here, so I'm going to lay out where the leg will be, and what I've done is I've transferred a pencil mark to the bottom of my shelf, and now I'm going to take a measurement on that. This is my inside, and so if I hold my little metric ruler up against here, you probably can't see this, but it's okay. This winds up being about 11 millimeters, and so that's what we're going to declare our offset to the bottom of our shelf. And so this is a good example of sh uh, showing how our stop square works. So when we work with the flip stop and we dial the, the flip stop down on the Zeta, we know we're 10 millimeters from the bottom of the, the flip stop to the center of the cutter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reference the flip stop off the bottom of the shelf, but we need to have our center line of our connectors offset to match that 10 millimeter. So here's a great application for when we're gonna use this, the uh, stop square. So since our offset was 11 millimeters, so we're going to have 11 and 10 is 21. So we're just going to dial this, this guy down until that's 21 millimeters and tighten it down. All right, so we're going to run a couple of slots. So I'm going to get ready to go with making my slots here, but if you notice how this is kind of a tippy operation, not a lot to hold my Zeta on my workpiece, this is a great opportunity to use the auxiliary stop square. So you can just slide the machine right onto the square and tighten this down, and now I'm gonna be able to hold on to this thing with just my thumb. Here we go. We're gonna take our other little tiny miter jam leg for the other side of the cabinet here that's gonna be a miter connection on the top, but it'll be obviously the same stop, stop uh, or offset as the left side jam leg. So I'm just gonna leave my settings on the Zeta the same and make my slots here. So here's my short little jam leg and here's my long cord piece and they're gonna be, they're gonna have it to be an angled connection. And because the inside of the cabinet is obviously the part that I'm going to be most concerned about, we're going to work off of the short point or the heel of the miter piece here. And because I cut these uh, a couple of weeks ago, I honestly, I forget what angle I cut these at, but it doesn't matter. We're going to find it with the Zeta. So I'm going to loosen up my flip stop. So this is loose. Hold my flip stop on the flat surface of my piece and dial the machine down. So right there, until it hits my facet, lock it down. Now we're all locked into place, and here's another example of where we're going to use this four millimeter spacer plate that comes with every Zeta, and put it onto the uh, put it onto the flip stop. And so now my cutter is going to be closer to my short point, so I don't blow out through my long point. So here's an easy way I'm going to show you how to do a P-system uh, uh, slots in the field of a panel where you don't have an edge to work off of. So I'm going to take one of my shelves and I'm going to hold it right up to the bottom reference mark I have here for my shelf. I'm going to make sure my edges are flush on my workpiece. I'll go ahead and clamp this down to the bench. And now we have a nice clear shelf to work off of to hold the Zeta against. And again, because the cutter is both 10 millimeters from the bottom of the cassette and the bottom of the flip stop, I'll be able to easily reference off of my shelf piece. So you'll see that here in a moment. So 
Let's use the Climax drill jig, and in this case, I'm going to use the outside surface to drill my six millimeter hole for the wrench. So I'm going to snap this into place, dial this down to that surface. That's going to line me up right where I need to be. Here's where we're going to use, work off the long point on my shelves. So this is the this is going to be the shelf that comes into my upright. So th this is my upright, right, my cord. These are my angled shelves that come in. So how we're going to do that is we're going to work off the long point. So I've set the miter gauge. I'm using a stop square to work from the long point. I've gotten my miter correct here on my piece, and so now, to get my height correct, all you do in this situation is you dial this right till that lines up on your mark. Tighten this down, let me check it again. Yeah, we're good, we're right there. So now we're gonna run our slots on our shelves. So now we're just all we're going to use is the uh, the flip stop set down to 90 degrees for working off the square edge of the shelves and these are all going to be the bottom points and if you recall when I did my layout on my my left jam leg I referenced off the bottom points so now we're just going to make all our 14 millimeter slots in these edges. We got the basic carcass together and we've got our layout lines here. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna line up our shelf with our reference line. I'm gonna confirm that it's good and square. That's a good fit. And then if you recall, we had my reference mark here that was based right off the Zeta where the slot is. So all we have to do is make a little center mark here. And then we're gonna trans that, transfer that through with the framing square. And we're gonna get all our layout lines on this. All right, so we've run our slots. We've got everything in place. So on this side of the uh, on this side of the shelf, we've got the Climax connector, and on the beveled side, we've got the, the new Flexus connector. So we're going to take this all apart again and, and glue it back together with a little bit of tight bond, so it's permanent. But just to show you how this now goes together. So inside a fixed uh, cabinet box. This, the Flexus allows you to install something either from a top or a bottom out installation. So ideally you put a Clamex on one side and then these flexible tabs just snap into place and then you take your Clamex wrench and, and lock, it in, lock it into place. You lock all four sides and if you need to take it out again, you just unlock it and this just snaps right back down and out you go. So we're gonna take this all back apart, glue it back together and do a dry fit in place. We got this all together. Glue is setting. So we'll do a dry fit in here. There's, there's the idea. Be a great little understeer cabinet. So we're going to take it out. We got to put uh, tongue and groove pine in the back for the backer on it, and sand it and put a pre finish on it, and then we'll we'll do the finish and final installation once that's all done. But. There you have it. Great application for Flexus. Thanks for watching.